All right, greetings. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In part one, we did uh, Genesis 1 and uh, Jeremiah chapter 4. Let's start from the beginning on Genesis 1. 1. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Did you know a new day starts in the evening when the sun goes down? Uh, how, how is it we, you know, midnight is when we start a new day. Now, when it got dark and then, you know, from evening to evening was the beginning and the ending of a day. All right, verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament, firmament, firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. After his kind. You know, that's the thing. Apple trees produce apples. Orange trees produce oranges. And uh, pear trees don't produce grapes. That's just how it works. And the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament, firmament of the heaven to divide the night, I'm sorry, the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So you got the moon and the constellations and the stars to be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. That's what the signs in the heaven were for. Verse 15, And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the sun, right? And the lesser light to rule the night, the moon. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Do you know that um, good is just God with an extra O in it? G-O-O-D? Oh, yeah. God is good, right? Uh, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And verse 20. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters hath brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. 
Well, God says, be fruitful and multiply, and the devil and his children say, oh, global warming, the earth is overcrowded, we got to we gotta call the herd, C-U-L-L. -L. If you don't know what that means, look it up, calling the herd. All right, verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Verse 26, here's the punchline. And God said, Let us, let us, plural, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Let us make man in our image. Now, God said, let us make man in our image. Is he talking to the angels? Well, if God is uh, saying, let us make man in our image, um, let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 21. It says, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. That's some advice that I could take uh, often. Verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit, part one, spirit, and soul, part two, and body, part three, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, Paul teaches you have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Three parts makes one person. Three parts, and yet we're made in God's image. So when God says, let us make man in our image, what is he saying? Well, in Malachi 2.10, have we not all one father? Hath not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Huh. In 1 Timothy 2.5, we read, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. All right, so, why, if there's one God, why is he saying, let us? Is he talking to the angels? I don't, I don't, well, let's take a look. All right, now, this is the thing. If God made man in his image, and man has a body, a soul, and a spirit, uh, why can't God be the same? I mean, after all, uh, you've heard of the Holy Spirit, and, you know, uh, why not? Why can't God be three parts that makes up one? Why not? I mean, you know, but uh, that's not the purpose of this study. But uh, in Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the, de to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Dividing asunder of soul and spirit. You see, your soul and spirit are not the same thing. 
uh, dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, which is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Oh, yeah. All right, so Genesis 1, back to verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our like." after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Now, if he created male and female, uh, what's he talking about here? I mean, Adam hasn't been formed from the dust of the earth yet. Is it possible that right now we're talking about the spirit or, or I mean the souls? Did God create the souls of the men and women that would live on this earth at this time? I'm kind of of that opinion. Now, some people will tell you that this right here is God did another creation before Adam, and then everything got messed up and destroyed, and, you know, that's, yeah, I've heard this kind of stuff. Uh, I just, I don't buy it. That's just my opinion. Uh, it's not a salvation issue, but I think right there is when God made the souls of every person that would ever inhabit a body upon the face of the earth. Male and female, you know, that's that's how I look at it. Uh, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. Now, if that's true, that would make some sense. Because let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 1, the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. Now, Josiah was a good king. It also came, also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. So, Jeremiah lived when Josiah, the good king, was around. And also, he was there around when um, Nebuchadnezzar's armies came and took Jerusalem captive and took him to Babylon. All right, but here's the, um, here's the punchline, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, now this is Jeremiah speaking. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, in the Holy Spirit, Jeremiah is speaking by, by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Did you catch that? Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God knew Jeremiah before he was even born. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, if in Genesis where we read, you know, male and female. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. Wouldn't it make sense that uh, God created our souls prior to giving us a body? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a, a stretch. I don't know. But we would have no, maybe we have no memory of this. Maybe that would be why, explain why God knew that Judas Iscariot would betray. Maybe that's why God knew that Esau would um, be, well, 
Let, let's take a look at Esau. Well, in Malachi chapter 1, in verse 3, the Lord says, And I hated Esau. And I hated Esau. And there's people who say, Oh, well, you know, it really doesn't mean that. It, it just means that he loved him less. Uh, yeah, well, the same word for hate is the same words where the Lord says he hates feet that are swift to shed innocent blood and how he hates iniquity and, you know, things that, uh, you know, things that God hates. So Malachi 1.3, And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. All right, let's take a look. In um, Psalms 26.5, the Lord says, I have hated the congregation of evildoers. So does that mean he loves evildoers less? Um, I don't think so. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. These six things doth the Lord Love less, right? That's what they want you to think. No, it doesn't say that. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, murderers. Oh yeah, Lord loves these less. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Yeah. So is that why God hated Esau? Because Esau hated God. And before, you know, Jeremiah was even born, God knew that he was going to make him a prophet to the nations. Did we exist in some kind of a form in the soul, spirit realm? You know? Back to Jer Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. Now, I think this is the souls. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Uh, and the world says, Oh, the world's overcrowded. Let's kill them all. But God says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you. It shall be for meat. Now, meat back 400 years ago just meant something that you would uh, have for dinner. But the modern usage is uh, animal flesh. I mean, if you don't know what a word means, like meat, remove the, e, uh, the M and you've got E-A-T, eat, right? So, you know, meat in 400 years, uh, if it said you and I sat down for meat, even though we were vegetarians, it would mean we're just sitting down at the table together having food. But now it means, you know, a steak or chicken or, you know, whatever. Yes, the language changes over time. Used to be to be gay meant you were uh, happy. Now it means you're a sodomite, possibly from San Francisco. Verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw, saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. 
So that's why in Revelation it says that uh, 666 is the number of a man because we were created on, uh, I believe our souls were created on the sixth day. All right, so now it says that everything, God saw everything they made and behold, it was very good. Now, if there was some kind of a, a war in heaven and, and catastrophe and destruction, why would it say, and it was very good? And God saw everything that he had made, behold, it was very good. Well, if things were, if this was a second creation coming up, it, it wouldn't be very good, would it? Uh, you know, I don't know. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. All right, chapter two. All right, chapter two. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, the Sabbath, right? And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Um, he, God, God rested on the seventh day as an example of, for us okay we're supposed to take one day off and reflect upon all the works that god did and to give him honor and glory god didn't take the day off and rest because he was tired okay verse three and god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which god created and made these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the heaven, made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the soil. Now, the Bible teaches we have a soul, a spirit, and now God's getting ready to create a body for Adam, a, for his soul to inhabit, okay? And just remember, if, if we are made in God's image with a body, soul, and spirit, why can't God have a body, soul, and spirit also? Although we are flesh and blood, whereas he not necessarily the same, right? So... Just some things to think about. All right, so verse 6. We just read verse 5 now. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the earth, a body, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, spirit, and man became a living soul, body, soul, spirit. And if you look up the uh, breath, wind, and spirit in the Greek, it comes from the word pneuma. And, uh, I, you know, there it is. And God formed man of the dust of the earth, created him body, and breathed, into his nostrils, the breath of life, man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. There you go. Now, personally, I think that uh, in verse 1, Chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 1, when we read that male and female created he them, I believe he created their souls. And then he implants their soul into a body. So, but, uh, you know, that's just, that's just my take on it. So, all right, well, I th that was my point. You know, and in Jeremiah 1, 5, where we read, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Is it possible that God created our souls first and he knew 
what we were before we were even born. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee as a prophet unto the nations. Maybe that is why God knew who would be his and who would not. Maybe that's where the doctrine of election fits in. Uh, you know, maybe when we were in this, this uh, before we were even born, God knew our choices and our actions and who would follow him and who would not before we were even born of flesh. I don't know. That's, you know, that's, you know, there's not a lot of, um, I don't have a lot of scriptural proof, but it's, it just seems, I don't know, I, I'm kind of of that opinion. What can I tell you? So, all right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. That's the end of this Bible study. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, all glory to him. Amen.